Tonight, a first look at Amazon's little black TV box. Microsoft announces Windows 8.1 and Cortana, the Siri killer. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 57 for Wednesday, April 2nd, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by ProXPN, a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be, anonymously and without oversight. For 20% off your new account, go to proxpn.com slash twit and use the code TN20. I'm Sarah Lane, and we start the program today with Amazon's Fire TV, a new set-top box the company unveiled at its media event this morning in New York City. Joining us to talk more about the specs and what makes the Fire TV a worthy competitor to the Rokus and the Apple TVs of living rooms everywhere is Devendra Hardwar, senior editor over at VentureBeat. Hi, Devendra. Hey, thanks for having me back. Well, thanks for being back, uh, especially on a very busy day like today. In fact, uh, you uh, joined the fray. You're, uh, you had an article up called uh, Hands On with Amazon's Fire TV and its funky mm -hmm. game controller. What do you yes. think? You've, you've obviously had some time to play around with this. Yeah, it's uh, it's really nice. Um, what I think is most interesting is that Amazon packed in a really fast processor in this thing. So just moving around the interface, um, launching games, loading movies feels super fast. Um, I also think they did some networking stuff to, that makes movie streaming much faster. I was able to uh, start loading a movie that wasn't in memory or anything in like less than half a second. So Which, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. What, what, I mean, what, what are they doing? What is this networking stuff that Amazon has been able to ch achieve that I can't have with my other mm -hmm. streaming devices? It, I mean, Amazon owns the cloud, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they're using some of their crazy, you know, S3 servers and some of their, you know, just crazy cloud architecture to kind of speed up how some of these services work. Um, a lot of them, you know, Netflix is still going to be the same Netflix we're used to, but uh, I think it's especially when you're loading something off of Amazon's store – the stuff is just fast, and I think uh, that's a really interesting experience. You know, if you're used to the spinning wheel on the Apple TV or something, it's very, very different. So the differences between, yeah, I mentioned Roku and Apple TV. They they have many uh, a lot of a lot of crossover as far as apps that you mm -hmm. can get on each device. But the UI is different. The design is different. Obviously, even the hardware looks different. What is your take on Amazon's version of this? Does it does it look nice? Does it does it stand out in any way? Um, I mean, the box, I can hold it up for you right here. It It's it's a box. It is a square box. Very, like, very simple design. It reminds me a lot of actually what Amazon did with the uh, first Kindle tablet, uh, the Kindle Fire tablet. It was just very basic. So I don't think they spent any thought or anything here on the design. Um, yeah, but it, almost what I just, do like, it just sort of almost looks mm -hmm. like a book on its side or something. That's it. I mean, it, it it's a good companion to the Xbox One, I guess, which is also very you know, boxy and black, but it's meant to disappear. Uh, what I do like is the controller, which uh, is kind of curved and feels very nice. Um, it's bigger than the Apple TV's remote. Uh, so if you're used to losing that in your couch, which I do all the time, uh, four that's times a, a good day. thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but smaller than the Roku's controller. Um, but it does cool things. And what I really like, uh, it has this button here for voice controls. You just tap the microphone, say, you know, the movie or the actor you're looking for, and it searches it instantly. And that is much better than any experience I have searching for things on the Apple TV or the Roku. Does it seem natural to to get used to voice search on a remote? Do you think that if Amazon convinces people that this is the way to do it, we're going to see this on remotes in the future? Um, I mean, we're, we're some remotes already have this. Uh, I think some Samsung TVs, uh, LG was implementing in some of their Google TVs. So some manufacturers have been trying this, but I think Amazon is the first to offer it in a set-top box like this. And uh, yeah, I, I do think it's necessary, you know. And honestly, there's all this talk about the new Apple TV coming out. I cannot imagine that Apple, you know, which is known for Siri and is pushing voice commands so much, can't imagine that Apple wouldn't have voice commands in their next Apple TV as well. Nobody likes pecking around with the Apple TV remote to search something. Besides the fact that Amazon is just getting getting into the the space of, mm -hmm. of set-top boxes, what about content? Is there anything that's standing out to you as uh, an Amazon offering that will that will provide something that if, if I'm deciding whether to get the next Apple TV or a, a Fire TV that I'd go with Amazon? Um, I think uh, on the video side, there really isn't much. The fact that Amazon has the Prime streaming service 
um, makes it a really it's there's a good synergy there for this box and their service. But you can get Prime on pretty much anything else. Uh, so that's not truly different. Uh, what is kind of different is uh, Amazon's focusing on games on this thing in a big way. You know, it's powered by a quad core processor. Uh, it can play all sorts of new Android games. And Amazon's also developing their own games. Uh, they just showed off uh, a game of their own called Sev Zero, which is like a cool sci-fi shooter. And uh, it looks good. It looks like it could be maybe not on the Xbox One, but maybe on the Xbox 360 from last year. Um, and that's sort of potential. You know, we're seeing so many Android uh, micro consoles coming out. The Ouya, uh, the Game Pop, there are a whole bunch. None of them are really taking off. I think, you know, this is a media box that can also play games. There's an ugly game controller with it as well. Uh, I hate this thing. <laughs> So ugly. Um, but, you know, this could be something different uh, that could really help out Amazon. Do you think do you think Amazon is 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 gunning for the Xbox and and more than perhaps people think the company recently purchased the video game studio Double Helix? They're hiring uh, veteran designers from uh, Kim Swift, who came from Portal, mm -hmm. Far Cry 2's Clint Hawking. That was just uh, some news that came out very recently. What do you how, how, how much do you think Amazon is taking gaming seriously? I think, I mean, the fact that they bought Double Helix and, yeah, they're bringing on some great developers shows that they're really paying attention to this. But I don't think they're necessarily, you know, planning to kill the Xbox or something. That seems kind of crazy. But the idea is that uh, there are so many great Android games out there. And clearly with all these micro consoles coming out, people think there is a need to get these games on your TV. So I think uh, Amazon has the potential to kind of build this niche market, uh, make Android games that could be the equivalent of console games. Um, and I think a lot of people, you know, this is a $99 box. Uh, people with kids, people who want to put gaming in a second bedroom or something just elsewhere around the house. There's a lot of really interesting uses for this, especially for parents that don't want to invest in expensive consoles. Devinder Hardwar, Senior Editor over at VentureBeat, thank you so much for joining us on TN2 and let folks know where they can follow more of your work. Thanks. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Devendra and yeah, every day at VentureBeat.com. All right. Well, good work today. <laughs> Thank you. Get some rest. Yeah. All right, everybody. Stick around. We have a lot more coming up, including a whole bunch of Microsoft news. It wasn't just an Amazon day to day. Cortana, Nokia phone announcements. But first, this episode is brought to you by ProXPN, a virtual private network that works with almost any internet connection. What it does is creates a secure encrypted tunnel through which all of your online data is passing through. An application can work with ProXPN, including your web browser, email, file sharing programs, pretty much everything. ProXPN keeps everything you do online hidden from people you don't want to see what you're doing. It will disguise your physical location. It'll give you access to any website or online service, no matter where you live, no matter where you travel. Complete online privacy through a 512-bit encryption tunnel, so you feel safe. Works via OpenVPN or PPTP. You choose. Protect yourself against your ISP's six strikes rule. You don't want to get caught up in that. Keep your personal internet usage private at work as well. You don't want Leo Laporte to know what you're looking at. Bypass geographical restrictions for internet content, online video, worldwide servers in the U.S., the U.K., Asia, and more. ProXPN also works with your iOS or your Android device, so you can use it no matter where you are or what device you're on. Steve Gibson, our resident security expert, gave it a great review on security now, and that speaks volumes. ProXPM premium accounts are normally $9.98 a month or $74.95 for an entire year, but we've got a special offer. Use the code TN20 to receive 20% off the lifetime of your account. That's only five bucks a month on the yearly plan. If you're not satisfied, you can cancel within seven days for a full refund. Go to proxpn.com slash twit and sign up with the code TN20. Or two zero. ProXPN accepts payments through Visa, PayPal, and Bitcoin as well. All right, let's get into some of that Microsoft news I told you about. The company's Build Conference is taking place this week in San Francisco, and today was its first day. Joe Belfiore, head of the Operating Systems Group, showed off a ton of features in Windows Phone 8.1, including Microsoft's personal assistant, Cortana, a new action center, customizable lock screens and backgrounds, just to name a few. Belfiore says that Windows Phone 8.1 will ship on devices in very late April or early May, so pretty right around the corner. Cortana is Microsoft's version of a Google Now or, or Siri from Apple. It's powered by Bing, and it takes over the search function on Windows Phone almost entirely. 
And the character is actually based on a 26th century artificially intelligent character in the Halo video game series, in case you're curious or the name sounded familiar. Microsoft also said today, today that it will make Windows free of charge for phones and tablets with screens under nine inches. The company also plans to let developers make universal applications that work on all devices running Windows Phone and Windows. The feature is headed to Windows 8.1 as well as Windows Phone 8.1. Other enhancements to Windows 8.1 include easier app access, better keyboard options. Microsoft says it's enabled their hardware partners to build lower cost devices for Windows as well, such as devices with only one gigabyte of RAM and 16 gigs of storage, again, to keep that price point down. But that's not all. No, no, even more news. Nokia has also announced three new Windows Phone powered Nokia handsets, the Lumia 6 630, 635, and 930. The Lumia 630 and 635 are really similar. They're both lower end, 4.5 inch screen, 5 megapixel rear camera, 1.2 gigahertz CPU devices. But the 630 is launching in Asia, Russia, China, India, and Europe. The 635 is built for use with US LTE networks. The 630 will ship in May for $159, and the 635 will arrive in the U.S. in the summer for $189. Price goes up a little bit for that LTE network. On the high end is the Lumia 930, Nokia's new flagship Windows phone, a 5-inch handset with a 1080p display, 2.2 gigahertz CPU, 2 gigs of RAM, LTE support, and a 20-megapixel camera. It's not cheap, though. $599 with availability starting in June in Europe, Asia, India, the Middle East, and Latin America, but not the U.S. All right, finally, for something completely different, the fourth season of Game of Thrones is debuting on HBO this Sunday, and I, for one, am pretty excited. However, if you need a little refresher on how last season ended or you just really like emojis. YouTube creator Kara Rose DeFabio has put together a recap of the third season of Game of Thrones explained completely via emojis. What did she call it? Game of Phones, of course. And you know, if you watch the whole thing, it's not very long, it's really accurate. So good work, Kara. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.